All right, it's been a crazy 2022. Let me just open my computer here. Hope for a green day. Hope for no crazy headlines. Anything like that for once. And let's see. Oh, it's it's red as always. Okay, what about headlines? Okay, first headline up here. J.P. Morgan's Jamie Dimon warns U.S. likely to tip into recession in six to nine months. Okay, fabulous for the first headline. Let's go to the next headline here. Arcs Kathy Wood issues open letter to the Fed saying it's risking an economic bust. In an open letter, Wood suggests that the central bank has shocked not just the U.S., but the world and has raised the risk of a deflationary bust. <sighs> Next headline, something good, please. Paul Tudor Jones believes we are in or near a recession, and history shows stocks have more to fall, a whole lot more. Oh, Jamie Dimon says SP down another 20%. Paul Tudor Jones, I don't know whether it just started or we're in <laughs> where it started two months ago. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, oh, man. In all seriousness, guys, I'm actually in a good mood today. Okay. I got some stuff to share with you in this video, some important things to show you that are going on out there. Okay. I did throw... As crazy as it sounds, I did add more fuel to the fire. I did throw money in this burning fireplace that is the stock market here today, okay? I'm going to show you all the different moves I made in this market here today, which is, at this point, it just seems like insanity, like pure insanity now at this point in time because you, you these headlines are awful. Like, it doesn't get much worse than this. You're just like, oh, my gosh, like, can we get a break here? Um, so I'll share all this with you. Hope you guys enjoyed as always. I appreciate you joining me. I'm actually in a good mood here today. And, uh, yeah, th thanks for everybody that subscribed to the channel as always, okay? First off, starting out with big tech here. Snowflake or the high flyer that once was Snowflake is just – Getting absolutely wrecked. I mean, the stock's down about 9% here today, and that one just can't catch a break. PayPal was involved in some drama over the weekend. That one got hit pretty hard today. Shopify is... Is there ever a bottom for Shopify? Like, seriously, is this stock ever bottom at some point in time? Incredible. NVIDIA, I want to dive into NVIDIA here for just a moment. So NVIDIA, I don't know how many of you guys are keeping up to date with NVIDIA. First off, this is a stock that's down over 60% year-to-date at this point. Over 60% for one of the best companies in the world, Okay. But that's nothing. This is even crazier to me than this stock being down 60 plus percent year to date. Check this out. This stock is at the same price it was back in August of 2020. It's lost almost all of its Rona gains now at this point in time, which is absolutely incredible. Because when you think about, you know, the 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 last several years that Nvidia's had as a company with record revenues, and not just record revenues, but just smashing numbers and record net income and all those sorts of things. And for now, this stock to be basically lower than it was prior to that 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 situation, right, goes to show you how negative this market's gone, right? And NVIDIA's numbers, to be quite frank, the fundamentals, like the numbers aren't going to be the best for the next probably, I would call it two to four quarters for NVIDIA. Same exact thing with AMD. But with that being said, the the move down for these stocks is nothing short of extraordinary when you're talking about 60 plus percent year to date and when you're talking about throwing the stock back to august 2020 levels i mean that's incredible absolutely incredible amd is, has been hit even harder this is it might even be a crazier one than nvidia to be quite frank check this out guys this stock is back to april of 2020 pricing there was just, you know, there was right after, uh, you know, the, the Rona worries kind of left the market, you know, because obviously the market bottomed, I think it was March 23rd, and then started to move up from there, right? And so this is back to basically where was April 20th of 2020? That's crazy to me, man. But that's, these stocks have lost all those gains. And the businesses have made incredible progress over the last several years. And, and AMD's revenues are at a much different place today than they were back then. NVIDIA's as well, right? But the thing they don't have now is positive momentum. Everybody knows the next several quarters are likely going to be really, really bad. When AMD reported that shockingly bad pre-announcement last week, right, with revenue missing by $1.1 billion, it was shocking. And so when it comes to NVIDIA and AMD, man, you know, um, I, I, to be quite frank, I wouldn't be surprised if those stocks end up lower over the next six to 12 months, just for the mere fact that, you know, I, I know their fundamentals in the business aren't, aren't going to be the best, right? 
there's a possibility that maybe we get a November, December rally. If that happens in that sort of situation, AMD and NVIDIA can potentially climb back. Um, but man, they're, they're, they're in just a tough spot from kind of a fundamental angle, but it's also just extraordinary to see how far those two stocks have fallen and, and two of the best companies out there, to be quite frank, to fall that hard is in, in, incredible. I mean, these aren't penny stocks. AMD and NVIDIA are two of the biggest companies in the world, but their stock prices look like the stock price of a penny stock. It's incredible, man. Absolutely incredible. All right. Microsoft just pretty much hit a new low. The stock's now down 31 plus percent year to date now at this point in time. And Mr. Softy had been one of the last few stocks holding up. He was, you know, for a while there was Microsoft, it was Apple, it was Tesla, right? And we've you know, really started to lose all three, to be quite frank. But Microsoft's the one that's really surprising people. And that's one seen as out of those other, out of those three, people usually look at Microsoft as the safest stock of that bunch, safer than an Apple, because people look at Apple and they're like, well, if we're in a recessionary environment, maybe not as many people are going to buy iPhones and things like that, right? Tesla, people look at that one. They're like, those are high priced vehicles. If you're in a recessionary scenario where interest rates are high, maybe not as many people order Teslas, things like that. Microsoft, it's a needs based product. And like, you know, people just got to stay signed up for that thing. And so they just keep getting their recurring revenue every year, every month, whatever the situation is there. But um, yeah, that stock price is just not holding up anymore at this point in time. And uh, that's quite interesting to see, right? Now, look at this. This is very interesting, guys. Let me explain why this is very, very interesting to all, all people watching this, right? If you remember the video I reacted to earlier today on, on my new channel, right? Uh, one of the videos I reacted to was Josh Brown talking about a barbell sh strategy, essentially. And what he was explaining in that video is essentially a strategy where you as a fund or whatever, you need to buy stocks that have held up pretty darn well surprise people, which would kind of be the, the Apple Tesla group. Like Tesla's held up much better in this environment than pretty much anybody had anticipated. Apple's held up much better than anybody had anticipated in this environment, just to be quite frank in regards to those two stocks, right? So his strategy was, you know, you kind of flood money into those. And for him, it was kind of more defensive plays and some of those, right? But it would be like the Apples and Teslas. And then he was also saying, by the stocks that have been hit the hardest, right? Because when you bounce back, those ones will bounce the hardest, which, you know, I hope we all know now at this point in time, right? Which is 100% accurate, right? So this is this is almost that exact strategy playing out right in front of us because Tesla and Apple rally, and then you got Meta rally as well. So it almost looks like a barbell approach where we're going to buy the, the ones that have held up much better and the one that's gone devastated. Nothing's been as devastated pretty much as in, in big tech up until recently, NVIDIA and AMD, um, than, than Meta, right? And so that almost looks like a barbell strategy right in front of our eyes right there, which I think is quite interesting, right? Now, oil, natural gas did, did move down today. That's some definitely good news out there, folks. Want to see oil and natural gas continue to move down. We need to see this, especially if you're thinking about future inflation numbers. And getting those inflation numbers down, we need to see oil and that gas continue to just um, not, not perform the best. Let's just call it that. Because if we look here today, WTI is higher today than it was at the same time last year, right? And so that's something to take into account. And obviously, gas prices are more expensive today than they were at this time last year. So that's something to remember there. And the one thing that worries me is kind of that no November, December time frame. Oil took a pretty big downward move in that November, December time frame. And, um, you know, I don't, I hope we get a similar scenario with oil here, but it's not a for sure, right? And if we don't, then obviously we're comping year over year against these numbers, which isn't the most ideal situation for CPI. The good news is uh, for 2022, especially as you get further into the year, you got you know, some some fairly easy comps in regards to that. Now, gas also is quite a bit higher today than it was at the same time last year. So do keep that in mind. And then, you know, right before basically November, December of 2022, Nat gas was trading in the four to five dollar range, under five dollars, well under five dollars. So do keep that in mind as well. And that's something that definitely hurts us and definitely causes me, uh, you know, at least a little worry on kind of the CPI side and uh, inflation in general, as, as far as that goes, right? You know, look at this chart. This is incredible. The euro versus the USD. Oh my gosh, man. And when does that reverse? I have no clue. Probably, if I had to guess, it's going to be at some point in 2023. Um, I would say probably earlier 2023. But that's just incredible to see these moves in currencies because this is not 
you know, this you don't ever see this. You know, this is a this is a historic year, and I hope everybody remembers a year like this because you just don't see this ever. Okay, weird stuff's happening in small cap land. This is a chef here today. Look at this surprising, very strange situation, right? So stock opens and it goes down in a straight line. It's like a roller coaster ride, right? All the way to under 425 at one point, right? And then just it's it's a dang roller coaster, straight up. And you know, in a lot of these small caps now at this point in time, and I think this is important for everybody to remember. You know, stock like a chef is a perfect example of this. There's going to be a I mean, I, I, I want to make sure I explain this in the, the best way possible, okay? Because this is a big deal. There's going to be a lot of shorts and traders playing games with these stocks, just to be quite frank. And I mean a lot of games. They're going to, you know, I, I don't even want to get into all the manipulative moves they'll be making in, in regards to these stocks, but they're going to be drastic, as you just saw right there. The chef has no news today, nothing going on. That stock just tanks right off the bat, do, 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 and then goes up almost in a straight line. It's, it's not, it's the furthest thing from normal, to be frank. Um, but when you, when you have these stocks that have fallen this much for some relatively bigger money to come in and throw around a stock like the Chef, they can throw that stock wherever they want it right now. If they want to push that baby up to seven bucks today, they can make that happen in 30 minutes. If they want to send it down to 350, they could make that happen in an hour. They can do. They can take this baby wherever they want to take in the short term. You can't make moves like that in Apple stock. You can't do things like that in, in Tesla stock or Google stock or, or stocks like that, right? But in regards to a stock like this, you know, the, the traders and the shorts, they can take this baby wherever they want to take it in the short term. And, and so I was trying to explain the longs of the chef recently. We have no power in this situation in the short term. None. You know, we got to, in terms of the fundamental story, we got to see that company expand margins over the next four quarters, you know, get their cash flows to a much better place over the next four quarters. That's something we got to see from that company. And we can't get, we can't get control of that stock again until we get that playing out. So for right now, this is, a, this is a trader stock, like they, in terms of what's going to happen in the short term. It has nothing to do with the fundamentals. It has nothing to do with the business model. They're just going to do whatever they want with it. If they want to send it to 4 bucks, they'll send it to 4 bucks. If they want to send it to 7 they'll send it to 7 They do whatever they want right now. And that's not the only stock. They're going to do it in other stocks as well, okay? Now, me, um, I was buying a whole bunch of stocks, and we'll, I'll cover those in just a moment for you guys on all the different stocks I was buying today, which there was a lot of them. But the Chef was one of those I picked up. I'm, I'm looking at it this morning, and uh, right now I'm in North Carolina, so you know it's nice to get up uh, early in the market. But the, the Chef was trading at 425. I'm like, okay, whatever, 425. Give me a freaking thousand shares. I'll take a thousand off your hands. Whatever. You guys want to play games? We can play games. Um, so yeah, that's just one of many stocks, and I'll show you all the others. But they're gonna they're gonna continue to play games, especially a stock like the Chef. It attracts a lot of them. Is other small caps I've noticed they don't play as many games in. You know, like the Oatleys, like the Honest, some of those. Um, but the Chef, they loved they love to play with that one, man. They love to play with that one. Okay, now WBA. Look at the move for this one. <laughs> you want to talk about a stock that's winning? Winner, winner, chicken dinner today, WBA. Here's the deal with WBA. In this sort of market, what does everybody say you need to flock to right now? They say you need to, this is what they say, you need to be investing in companies that have safe business models, have great cash flow, have great profitability, are trading at a very low valuation, and hopefully pay a dividend. Well, guess what? That's Walgreens to the exact T. Walgreens business model ain't going nowhere tomorrow, right? It's trading at a P of like, I don't know, five or something ridiculous, right? It's got a dividend yield of over 6%. It, it has a, man, a proven management team there. So a, a stock like Walgreens is the stock people like to look at in, in a market like this, right? The stock hasn't performed very well recently, but I can almost guarantee you there was some funds over, looking over things all this weekend and like, hmm, collect a 6% plus yield in a stock like this. At a 5 P ratio, okay, you know what? And at a 0 0.2 price to sales ratio, yeah, Walgreens looks pretty darn attractive right here, right? And they make a move out there. And so yeah, that, that's uh, Wall Street for you right now, right? Now, travel stocks continue to get hit. 
these stocks can't find a, a bottom anywhere. I mean, it's it's awful. You know, uh, Wind Resorts got hit today. RCL Royal Caribbean down six percent today. CCL is CCL going to hit five dollar range? Oh my gosh, it's in, it's insane, man. I think like CP, CCLs call my name, like Jeremy, come by me, and I'm like, please, I already had you once, okay? And then you gave me a once in a hundred year health event right after that, <laughs> please, okay? MGM Resorts, you know, continues to get hit. These travel stocks just can't can't find a way to uh, win in the short term, and it's unfortunate, but it is the way it is. Obviously, in terms of the capital cost of those businesses, very expensive. And um, but something to keep in mind, right, is those companies don't have to worry about much competition coming for them anytime soon. Because who's going to build a, you know, a $4 billion resort in Macau or Vegas anytime soon with the way the cost of capital is going up now at this point in time? You think any of those announcements are coming in 2023 about a new $4 billion resort, a $2 billion resort in 2023? You think any announcements for a bunch of new ships are coming in 2023? Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind there. And I don't think a lot of people think about that. They only think about the downside and the bad thing that comes with, you know, the cost of capital being more expensive than we've seen in a long, long time. But they don't think about all the companies that can, uh, you know, push them around now, right? And uh, some of those companies get, I don't want to say more of a monopoly type stake, but almost, right? You just, you just like, who, who's going who's gonna to build a new ship that costs a billion dollars plus right now? to compete with CCL and RCL. I was doing that in 2023. Give me a break, man. Not with the cost of capital right now. You're never going to get the money for it. So that's just the situation with that, right? Now, here's some of the stocks I was buying here today. Bought Skyworks Solutions, uh, 27 shares there. I bought Palantir, 100 shares there. I bought, obviously, the Chef that I covered there. I bought eight shares of Google there. I bought seven shares of Meta. I bought 111 shares of Honest. I bought 300 shares of Oatly here today. So those are the moves for me uh, here today in regards to that, okay? Now, somebody made a, a comment I loved. Okay, this is the comment of the day right here from Ray. Ray says, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting biceps from holding these bags. You and me both, man, looking like Arnold right now. I love, that's, that's the best comment I've seen all day. Uh, so definitely comment of the day there. Now, in regards to this, in, in all seriousness, right? I'm really happy because I've seen definitely a shift in uh, the way folks are perceiving the market, right? And it's a very different perception than a year ago. A year ago, people were very scared about any sort of little drop in the market. And now what I'm finding is people are almost hoping the market goes down more, not because they're shorting the market. Actually, they're net long. They're like very long the market, right? Meaning essentially they, they own stocks and they're buying stocks they believe in for long term. But the way these folks are looking at this is quite interesting. They're looking at it as push these stocks more down more. I'll just continue to buy for the next 6, 12 months, however long, um, and get these stocks for much cheaper valuations than you would have ever thought possible. And you look at a stock like AMD, right? It's like, would you rather paid $160 for AMD like it was you know, uh, within the past year, or would you rather pay 50 bucks for AMD, right? Same company, same as that company. Uh, one time it was valued $160. Today it's valued at 50 bucks, right? Would you rather pay 300 something dollars for NVIDIA stock or $100 for NVIDIA stock? So I love seeing the perspective change. And it's amazing how fast it's happened, like literally in a year's time where people are like, I don't care. I'm a long-term investor. Like, you know, send stocks down for the next six, 12 months. I'll just continue to buy, buy, buy very different perspective because yeah in the past it was like people were scared scared of like oh my gosh stocks might go down now people are like i don't care man i'll buy more shares for cheaper and for a lot of us long we've already been through so much pain it's like you know let's say palantir let's say you bought palantir 15 right and it's it's you know seven at that point in time it's like push it down to six i don't care you know and so that's just a perspective out there uh, from the long side and I'm, I'm i'm pleased and that's one of the reasons i'm happy today is just seeing that shift in perspective is pretty powerful obviously people on call options that are doing more trading activity or a margin are in a pretty scary spot right but um 
outside of that scenario, I've actually seen you know pretty healthy environment, at least on my channel. I don't want to speak for all of retail because obviously not all of retail watches my channel, but for at least the folks that watch my channel, I've seen a pretty good um, you know kind of reaction there. So I appreciate that. Uh, if you guys didn't get to check out the video on my new channel that I released earlier today, definitely check out that one. I reacted to three videos. Investors need to use this strategy for the next 21 days on my new channel there. Much love as always, guys. I appreciate you joining me and have a great day.